Why was I programmed to feel pain? I remember back in elementary school when I was a wee Davy, when flash games were really starting to pop off, hopping on the computers while at the school library, hopping on to cool math games and playing the hit flash game at that time, Balloons Tower Defense. It was fun and lighthearted in an era where everything needed to be hyper realistic and gritty and grrr, but I fell in love with it. I love these stupid monkeys, and I love these stupid balloons even more. But as Davy got more and more woke, I started catching on to something I never really thought about. These seemingly lighthearted, fun loving monkeys turned from mischievous dart throwing pranksters to war crime committing genocidal monsters of mass destruction. Thermonuclear bombs, chemical warfare, unethical experimentation. Just where do we draw the line? Well, after much internal debate, and probably ending up on an FBI watch list, I've decided I'm where it ends. I sat down for six hours and went through every monkey, tower, and upgrade in the game to find every violation in which these tyrannical warlords compromised the sanctity of life to continue their onslaught of mass genocide. Today, I ask and answer a question no one has probably ever thought to themselves. How many war crimes did the monkeys of Bloons Tower Defense 6 completely ravage? To briefly explain the format I'm going to be going in, I'm going to go through every hero and monkey in order of their tabs and explain how or why they break the laws. Granted, there are going to be two problems that are going to be the most prevalent through this video, and that's the fact that the real world and the Bloons world aren't too equivalent as well as the fact that the Bloons world doesn't have the most expansive lore. Unfortunately, the real world doesn't have laws that outlaw the existence of melting people with the power of the literal fucking sun. But it's probably safe to assume that it did exist. It would have regulations under incendiary weaponry. And for the second point, there are points of contentions in these laws that simply cannot be known. I don't know the Bloon hierarchy. I don't know the monkey hierarchy. Are there slaves? Are there workers, civilians, I don't know, and nobody will ever know, so I'm going to have to go on a case-by-case -case basis with some of these. With both of those disclaimers out of the way, let's begin with Quincy, who is presumably the son of Quincy. Well, we're off to a great start, because as far as I'm aware, Quincy actually doesn't commit any crimes. The bow and arrow aren't outlawed whatsoever in war, and the other assets to Quincy are all entirely legal. There might be a subtle yet intentional play by Ninja Kiwi to unlock him first on your balloon adventure, but don't you worry, it goes downhill from here very, very quickly. Gwendolyn is where everything that Quincy tried to build up comes to an incendiary halt. Even her description seems to indicate blatant disregard for Protocol 3, which restricts the use of incendiary weaponry, or protecting the pilot, and god damn it do I miss Titanfall already. Also, her level 6 and 14 upgrades start to burn the balloons alive, which I can only imagine is a big no-no. Striker Jones doesn't inherently break any crimes by himself. He's just a monkey with a rocket launcher, but he does provide upgrades to both mortar and bomb shooters respectively, which, as you'll find out later in this video, both violate war crimes, and seeing how he's listed as a commander, it's safe to assume he's somebody who's allowing and utilizing the usage of these illegal and unethical tactics. Oban does give benefits to all nearby magic monkeys, but unlike Striker Jones, doesn't seem to assume a commanding role, so I'll let that slide. But what I can't let slide is the usage of brambles, which can be summoned on the track that perfectly fits the description of a booby trap. While you could argue that these bushes are just sharp, and hence pops any balloons that make contact, that is nullified by his level 16 upgrade which allows it to pop lead. The melting point of lead is about 621 degrees in American, and I don't know if you've ever thrown a piece of metal in a forest, in fact I'd actually have to question why if you did, but it didn't explode instantaneously, meaning Oban specifically raises these brambles to cause excessive injury to unsuspecting balloons that might just be going on a lovely stroll through Monkey Meadow. Etienne, Etienne, Ledian, I don't know, he's just a little monkey dude who utilizes drone technology in which I'm going to leave a post-it note right here. As of releasing this video, nothing he does is illegal. His drones don't have any unethical weaponry or tactics, but the concept of using drones for coordinated strikes has been a point of contention for years and years. So there's a genuine possibility if you're watching this video a few years from now, this little rascal could actually be a hardened war criminal. But as of current, he gets a pass. Churchill is just a guy on a tank. Tanks are allowed in war. Good job, Churchill. 
Benjamin doesn't have offensive abilities in the typical sense, but has ways of supporting his murderous kin through hacking and funds and disrupting enemy tactics and ranks, which absolutely falls under cyber warfare, making him another war criminal. Even my beautiful baby boy Benjamin can't escape the horrific realities of war. Oh yeah, speaking of cybersecurity and cyber warfare, this video isn't sponsored by NordVPN, because I'm not big enough to get sponsors, which is why I'm going to ask that if you're enjoying the video to subscribe and or hit the like button. Pet Fusty just punches shit. Next. From here on out, any instance of plasma weaponry is going to be alongside incendiary rules, since it's fucking plasma, and there hasn't been any laws for accounting of the possibility of just dropping the literal sun on their enemies. Get on that one, NASA. Azili's main attack is a curse that deals significant damage over time, which I believe would fall under prolonged and unnecessary suffering. Also, sacrificial totems drain your own lives, but I don't know what lives constitute as. If it's literal lives of civilians she's slaughtering, then she's a horrific commander of only the most vile would consider choosing. But if it's just an arbitrary number because video games, it doesn't really mean anything, so put her on a watch list and go from there. Brickle gets a cautionary innocent. I say cautionary because naval mines are entirely legal but have to go through a checklist of requirements to do so, such as giving notifications of where the mines are located, whether the water they're located in is neutral or international, and other various factors. So until Ninja Kiwi gives us established lore on where Lotus Island or the Spice Islands are, the mysteries of the Blue Universe may never be solved. And with that, my voice is dying, and we've gone through all the eight available heroes at your disposal. Which means we're moving on to the monkeys and towers. To elaborate on how I'm going to rank these, I'm only going to do it on a one path basis. Due to the corrosive glue upgrade on the top path, theoretically every glue gunner can be illegal. But if you went on the middle path for instance, that's allowable cause it's just fucking glue. With that being said, let's jump into our first contender, the dart monkey, king of the goons. I was surprised to find out that catapults have a history of bioterrorism, but that was mostly because we were launching decomposing animal carcasses over castle walls. And unfortunately, the decomposing horse tower isn't in the game yet, so the Ultra Juggernaut is safe. The middle path transforms itself and up to 20 potentially law-abiding monkeys into law-breaking plasma-wielding maniacs. So this gets a guilty verdict, not only because of the plasma, but because you can't force civilians to do military-related work for an occupying force. Just like Twitter, this fan club is actually a hostage club. The Permacharge Boomerang Monkey relies on the existence of monkey consent. That is a sentence I never thought I would say in my entire fucking life. But if a group of maniacal monkeys just got together and ripped this poor soul's hand off to turn him into a balloon-murdering psychopath, that absolutely qualifies under inhuman treatment experimentation. What the fuck? No matter what, the bionic boomerang is never guilty. Boomerangs, despite all their blatant warlike qualities, aren't outlawed, but whoever did this, they're not okay. MOAB domination is Australian. Death sentence. The top path of the bomb shooter doesn't inherently break anything, but it does specifically mention that it increases the damage dealt by fragmentations which are illegal if they can't be tracked via x-ray, and I have no clue how you would ever attempt to x-ray a balloon for metallic shrapnel, so every case of it is going to warrant a guilty verdict. Put a giant notice on top of the bomb shooter and press charges on anyone who attempts to give a shrapnel munition. The bottom path bomb shooter, as previously mentioned, has defrag bombs upgrade, which is already a war crime. But don't you worry, it repents for its misdeeds by replacing those fragmentations with cluster bombs, and by repent, I mean the opposite, because that's also illegal in many places. It replaced its war crime with an even more dangerous war crime that gets upgraded to an even more lethal war crime. Good job, bomb shooter. You did it. Kudos. I'm gonna go ahead and say that every ice monkey counts as crimes against humanity. I don't care whatsoever if there's no law strictly saying that they are. If Obama's weather machine got in the hands of the wrong people and they started making the day after tomorrow a reality, you can bet your soul that they're going to get nuked into non-existence in the planes between oblivions. The top path of Glue Gunner... I mean, come on. Fucking look at him. Do you think he's a law-abiding citizen? Absolutely not. The middle path sniper has a shrapnel upgrade, and due to our non-existent balloon X-ray technology, makes it illegal. Both Plutonium Reactor and the Energizer are both categorized under radiological warfare, which also classifies it as a weapon of mass destruction 
and probably causes long-term environmental damage wherever you deploy it. So yeah, uh, no. Although not shrapnel in a traditional sense, Air Burst Darts does say that it bursts into three more darts on impact. And you could make the case that Sub Commander, commanding other war crime fueled murder monkeys, would qualify it as a double whammy of bad. The cannon ship has shrapnel implemented into its cannons, but more interestingly, Burning Grapes not only qualifies as an incendiary device, but as we'll get into our next example, could also land in hot water due to its fruity nature. I just realized that last sentence could have a lot of pun interpretation. Uh, feel free to figure that one out, I'm not paid enough to. Exploding pineapples is questionable, because it's associated with a food, which would make it illegal if it was qualified under a booby trap, which with certain definitions could easily be the case. However, that does get entirely replaced as soon as you unlock bomber race, so as long as no balloons die before you get that upgrade, you should be alright. The biggest one confuses me not because of legality, but because I don't understand the upgrade. It says that it has powerful Bernie stuff in its upgrade description, which with paired with the artwork, heavily implies shenanigans. But when I use it in-game it doesn't deal fire damage unless I buy Bernie stuff. Now I have no clue if that's because I'm a balloons noob, but upgrades such as really big bombs have different wording, such as allow. So, if somebody who's a BTD master can explain to me in the comments if I'm an idiot or not, that would really help me out. Speaking of Bernie stuff, Bloon Cineration. He's burning the balloons alive with fire and death with a cheerful smile on his face. Absolutely despicable. The Dartling Gunner's Ray of Doom not only kills everything in its path, but if it has the deliberate design choice of permanently blinding balloons, would be against the protocol of blinding laser weapons. If you're typing in the comments below, but wait a minute, balloons don't have eyes? You're wrong. The Hydra Rocket Pod's upgrade specifically states that it is powered by depleted Bluntonium, which is a reoccurring chemical in the Blooniverse. But it does say that it is used to create the balloons, so it's kind of like shooting a flesh gun. Now, I don't know what you want to do with that information, but it still gets a ban for poisoned bullets and chemical warfare. Lizard Ward Phoenix is just fire. Lots and lots of fire, and a bird that's on fire. A pyromaniac and an animal abuser. Fantastic. The Prince of Darkness is a necromancer, and although necromancy hasn't been outlawed... yet... there's a whole bunch of different charges you could press. The primary example being hostages, slaves, and prisoners of war, since it explicitly states that all the balloons are reanimated servants. I don't know what else you expected. The dude has anguished balloon soul spiraling around his gamer chair. Doesn't seem to be the hospitable type to me. I don't know if employing God is a crime against humanity, but both the top and middle pass for the super monkey utilize plasma, the middle of which also has an element of monkey experimentation, so we need to find that bastard who did this to the permacharge boomerang, because it looks like he's a repeated offender. Luckily, Batman doesn't commit any crimes, which is both incredibly fitting and unfitting at the same time. The Alchemist? Ooh, oh no. Even the base auto attack is chemical warfare. Even without attacking anything, it has the potential to make almost everything in this game a biohazard with its acidic mixture dip, which qualifies under poison bullets, which is unlawful no matter how it's employed. I don't know if there are any monkey children on the battlefield, which is already a crime, but that crime would be even crimier if there was somebody giving them brew. The middle path increases the chemical potency of his attacks, and resolves in him transforming five nearby monkeys into crazy attack monsters. Live monkey experimentation, and potentially civilian warfare, so two points for him. The last one is live experimentation on their enemies through chemicals. What more do I have to say? The Alchemist gets a dishonorary medal of being the most unlawful monkey soldier out of the group. Absolutely abhorrent, 0 out of 10, F. The Druid's top path I'm going to label as unlawful, because they have a thunder gun, which was made by a crazy German man, and if the media has taught me anything, it's to not trust crazy German men. Which is fitting, because my ancestors were German, and I'm upset they made me by proxy. The middle path, Although similar to Odin, I'm going to list as legal. The key thing to note is that it's a targeted attack instead of a deployable one. If I throw a landmine at somebody and it instantly explodes on contact, blowing them to little smithereens, that's just a makeshift murder grenade. The banana farm is quite possibly even worse than the alchemist, because capitalism is bad. There's even monkey Wall Street. It gets the exterminatus. Go fuck yourself. The spike factory breaks quite a few laws. 
The majority of the spikes are more than likely going to be listed under superfluous injury and unnecessary suffering. But the top path being the most sinister of them all. I, I mean, it has eight skulls on it. That's double the amount the Prince of Darkness has, and that's even worse because it has skulls and balloons don't anatomically have skulls! Ninja Kiwi, we need answers now! Last, but certainly not least, is the Engineer Monkey. The Balloon Trap and its XXL variant are both illegal due to their lack of an effective neutralizing mechanism. The only way for them to go away is for it to consume more and more lives until it can't consume anymore. I want to make an ex-wife joke, but I've never been married, so I can't. And with that, that is all the monkeys that are war criminals in Balloon's Tower Defense 6. So if my math is correct, a little over the half of the monkeys should be judged for their crimes, few just need a label on the top, two desperately need hugs, and the remaining 40% or so are innocent, meaning about half the time you're deploying and upgrading your smiling, innocent, fun-loving creatures, you're actually enabling the worst criminals this world could ever imagine. If I missed any towers or explanations, feel free to let me know in the comments. Although this list isn't entirely definitive due to the lack of real-world equivalencies, I'd love to have an intellectual YouTube debate in the comments about monkey war crimes. If you made it this far into the video, uh, firstly, why, but secondly, thank you so much. If you like the video, do whatever you want. I could pressure you into pressing arbitrary buttons to make arbitrary numbers go up, but that's not the gun face style. I already did that. Shit. I anyway, thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay frosty, my friends.